My name is Morley. I am a street artist from Los Angeles, California. I work with wheat pasted posters that I paste around the city. They contain messages and slogans that I come up with, hopefully that are positive or funny or just bring a little smile to someone who's coming off a rough shift or a tough day. Uh, I started doing what I do because I got tired of waiting for someone to tell me that I was qualified to do it. Now, the world is full of gatekeepers and people that will tell you, you know, you need to wait until you have permission to express yourself. And so I just decided, you know, screw it. I'm just going to start pasting my stuff up and, and seeing if people respond to it positively. Hearing people give me feedback and, and tell me that something that I created and put out there, you know, gave them some small measure of hope or some small amount of, of uh, relief to their day, you know, that's the reason that I do what I do is, is to know that I'm making some small difference in someone's life. I grew up in a town in Iowa called Iowa City. When I graduated high school, I went to the School of Visual Arts in Manhattan. And going there really changed everything for me because it really kind of opened my eyes, not only to New York City, but also to the many different kinds of, of artistic expression that exist. I went there to be a screenwriter, but while I was there, I met people that were photographers and that were graphic designers and painters and illustrators. And, it really made me realize like, wow, there's so many different ways that you can convey a message or convey a sentiment. At the same time, I started seeing art by people like Shepard Ferry and Neckface and a lot of the other great New York uh, graffiti writers and realizing street art wasn't a flyer to come see your band, it was your band playing. And so for me, that was really intoxicating, this idea of like, it's not something that would lead to something that would lead to something. You know, I was majoring in screenwriting and screenwriting is basically creating blueprints for films that might never get made and so for me it was it was exciting to be able to create something and have it live out its destiny instead of constantly be just something that was hoping to one day live out its destiny. So I started putting primarily stickers, things I would silk screen messages that I had created onto contact paper, you know, the things that you line kitchen cabinets with, and I would stick it around the subways. And back then it was it was primarily just text and that was it. But then when I moved out to Los Angeles, I started realizing that I needed to create stuff that was bigger that could be seen as you're driving down the street at 35 miles an hour. And at that point I decided I wanted to create something that had some kind of recognizability to it, something that would that, would, that people would feel they could connect to, and not necessarily just a brand or a logo, but a person, a human being. And so that was when I decided to start drawing myself into a lot of my pieces, because I wanted people to see it as, as a human being that was expressing these things, and not a, a cool urban folk hero, but a, a human being that was, you know, kind of as awkward and gawky and just a sort of silly looking guy in glasses. And so maybe they could relate to that more and appreciate the fact that it wasn't coming from someone who had it all together, but from just another person like them. It's funny that it created a sort of double-edged sword. On the one hand, I feel like I do have that human connection with people, that people, when they see my stuff and then when they come up to me at like a gallery show or something, will feel a kinship that, that they might not necessarily have with just any artist. But at the same time, there's a very specific kind of frustration when you create something that you think is gonna be having an emotional impact and you come back and see that someone's drawn a dick on your face. I would say about 80% of the time, my spots are found just spur of the moment. I drive around Los Angeles with a bunch of different posters with different sentiments, and I look for contexts that will inform the posters, the messages, and bring the sort of most out of the messages that, the, that they can. Or I'm just looking for a space that I can paste on that might not get taken down after 24 hours. And then there's, I'd say, the other 20% of the time that I do measure, I'll see a spot, I'll be like, ooh, this is perfect, and I'll. I'll go out there and I'll sort of recon, I'll, I'll do some research and figure out the best way to sort of 
put my message on it and how quickly, what time of day, but that's rare. Usually it kind of needs to be more spur of the moment and just driving around and until I find a spot. I've become very uh, comfortable with the fact that my stuff is so temporal, that it's gonna be there for a day and maybe gone the next. I think that creates an element of beauty in the sense that a person that walks by that, it really was that moment and that if they had walked by it a day later or an hour later, it might not be there anymore or it might be covered up with you know, something else or painted over or torn down or whatever. So the idea that a person would come across something in that moment creates an intimacy between the art and the person that I don't think you necessarily get if it was gonna just be there forever. important to embrace the flaws and embrace the imperfections of who you are in order to create something that is different from everybody else because no one else has had those experiences and no one else has necessarily those flaws and those imperfections in the, in the exact same way and so for me it was really important to embrace all of the different aspects of who I am. Uh, my name Morley is actually my middle name and growing up I was always really embarrassed of it. It sort of seemed old-fashioned and kind of dopey and and then I sort of realized as I was kind of creating this, this idea that I'm old fashioned and I'm dopey and so why not just wear it as a badge of honor instead of something that, that I wish I could have exchanged for something cooler. And I think that that's one of the things that I think is important for, for artists is to, is to see the things about themselves they wish they could change and, and you know, raise them up like a flag instead, you know? So you want me to say everyone who knows us knows. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>